Welcome to the Wisdom of Jacob's Ladder. My name is Jacob Cooper, best-selling author of Life After Breath and the Wisdom of Jacob's Ladder. For those of you who are new to my channel, we love having you. Please make sure you continue to support the channel through subscribing so you get up-to-date interviews each and every week coming your way and notifications. Today's episode is episode number 28, and I am very excited to introduce my guest, Barbara Roberts. Barbara Roberts is a face reading expert, and she's going to really be telling us and showing us what a face has to show for us, for ourselves and the people that we encounter. If a picture, you know, could speak a thousand words, imagine what our faces can do. And so Barbara will delve into this ancient study in science about face reading and what it has to show about us, and more importantly, how we could better understand people from areas of dating, career, and more. So Barbara's going to delve into the different structures of facial features and how that could help us to really have an understanding as well as a degree of empathy with those that we encounter on our paths. Without further ado, I bring on Barbara Roberts, world-renowned face reader on the Wisdom Jacobs Ladder. Barbara Roberts, thank you so much for being my guest here on the Wisdom of Jacob's Ladder. It's such a pleasure to have you. My pleasure. Nice to be here, Jacob. Thank you. Hi to everyone tuning in. Yeah, you know, I've been um, a fan of your work ever since I could remember. I just remember watching you on the Tyra Banks show and a lot of your other videos. And when I know I'm just having a sad day or I just want some, you know, inspiring energy, just your your. I know we'll talk about the face readings, but your voice has a very healing component to me to it as well. And you're you're a big healer. But you know, those I mentioned in the intro that you do uh specialize in face reading. Could you talk a little bit about what is, you know, face reading and a little sure. bit about the work that you do? Because for me, it just blows my mind, you know, the work that you do and how it works. But yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, it's so interesting because as you might have mentioned, my background's clinical medicine at UCSD, work with the NIH. And so when I became interested in face reading, people were like, what is that? Right. I mean, this was in the 80s. It was like, mm. and so, you know, to come from that into something so intuitive, it was quite a range. So basically, face reading is a psychological, spiritual system of understanding people and it helps you to understand someone's character their motivation what are their gifts what are their life lessons in dating for example we want to get a 70 30 match where 70 percent of the facial features are similar 30 percent are different for chemistry and then it's a long-term relationship oh. if when i teach classes for ceos and on management i tell people Face reading is your intuitive edge in business. So if you can see people clearly, whatever your area of service is, you can give better service to the person. Because you know that if they're a cerebral person, that's the upper forehead. If they're an emotional person, which is in here, or if they're well-centered, you take everything you know and you funnel it or you work it so that it meets who they are and how they think and what they need to be able to reach them more quickly. And then, of course, another component, which I love doing and is in my book and on a lot of the TV shows on YouTube, is are you in the career you were born to do? Because there is a career that matches your face. And the joke I tell people is if for example, I told you I was a Navy SEAL and the head of the LAPD department. Hopefully you would laugh because I've <laughs> nothing like that on any level. Right. <laughs> so, so if your face matches what you do, people go, oh yeah, yeah, he does that. So, so these are all things related to face reading. And basically face reading is looking at someone's facial features. And so, um, cause I've been doing this 35 years mm. Uh, have looked at at least 15,000 people. I lost track. So basically the facial features are like, I have a widow's peak. Where is mm. it up here? Uh, my face is a longer face like Abraham Lincoln. The ears will show you the neurological part. The money is in the nose. Wow. The eyes 
have 10 different parts that show you how someone sees things, their soul age. So every facial feature will tell you something. Something and, unique and different. Wow. Yeah. So there are thousands of these. I probably know by now about 400 or so. And so every time, so far, every time I say them, and I do this internationally all the time, whenever I say you have this, it means people say yes. <laughs> so, so that's the goal, accurate, repeatable, and helpful to people. Wow. And for your work, correct me if I'm wrong, but this goes beyond culture and genetics. Is that correct? Yes. Could you like speak on that? Because sometimes there's... Yeah you know, genetics and culture that may influence certain facial features or present, you know, maybe speak on that a little. Yeah. Yes. That's the answer for that. Jacob's about an hour in terms of yeah. genetics. Cause that's my background is medicine. So, yeah. Okay. We're going to skip genetics. Cause we know that, you know, you're born, you know, your father has red hair, has a big nose in your family, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. We know all right. that. However, the more important part for me is the ethnic connection. And I grew up in St. Louis, and in my background, there it was very, um, I hate to say it was in the 50s, but there was a racial component that I always found really disturbing. And um, so the goal of face reading is helping people to come together because the facial features and the system that I do, all the facial features are universal. It doesn't matter what ethnic background you are, how old you are, your gender, it's irrelevant. The facial features are universal. However, what I do cover in my book is that let's say you're born, you're Chinese or you're um, African-American, we would assume that you would have dark hair and brown eyes. So any feature that might be related to an ethnic component, I take those features and I put them to the side when I'm reading someone's face. And then I look at the parts of their face that make them special as a soul, as a person, and that's face reading. So there is a little bit of an ethnic part, but basically the facial features are all universal for 400 features. Wow. My question is, you know, and we'll get back on track, you know, towards the latter part of a conversation discussing, you know, the, the those special features of the face, which I know we've spoken about. But do you think people intuitively pick up on face readings themselves in a way? Is that something you feel people pick up on or like, you know, how does that work? Really good question. Depends how conscious the person is. <laughs> Because yes, people who are aware, working on themselves, have a spiritual component, they intuitively understand people. You know, they kind of get a sense of, oh, I like this person, this person's lying, you know, right. they get a gut feeling. What face reading does, though, Jacob, it brings it into, here's the system. You know, all you have to do is open my book. Here's the facial feature. It means this. So it's very clear. Whereas intuitively, sometimes if let's say we know someone and they've done something not great to my sister or my brother, so I might have a point of view on them that might not be exactly who they are. Mm. But so, you know, our intuition might be flavored by other people's opinions or feelings other people have about them. Whereas face reading is very objective. It's this is it. <laughs> these right. are your, you know, these are your features and they mean these things. Sure. So it's, it's more down to earth, objective and repeatable. Yeah. I mean, obviously we believe in the evolution for us as, as a species. I'm wondering if there's differences that you can notice throughout one's lifetime when they be, when they become maybe more evolved in its correlationship mm -hmm with the facial structures on the inverse, when someone, you know, kind of isn't as connected as they were. I mean, they say when they look at kids, there's a radiance in the eyes. Exactly. Some adults keeps that, but others that eyes dim. But I'm wondering, how does that work? Why does, maybe why does yes. that work? Yeah. Um, we're, this is the whole area of soul age. And yeah. we're going to talk about that a little further in the show, because it's actually one of the more, challenging parts to read accurately yeah. and anyone I've ever met who does like I've 
done 50 years of meditation and inner work. Anyone who does that, of course, would like to be an old soul, but not everybody is. Right. So we're going to talk about that later because that relates to the radiance of the eyes. The radiance of, yes, yes. Yeah, and but before that, I think what will be interesting to your um, podcast people is a few of the facial features that are universal and what they mean. So I have some pictures of things and I thought I would show them and explain this is what it means for this person. And then when you do a composite face reading, you put them together. And as far as I know, I'm the only author in my book, not only with a medical background, but puts all these facial features together yeah. for a universal picture of the character of someone and the story i say is face reading is how to read someone at a glance i'm sure my viewers would love to look at you know these examples and i'm sure it'd be very informative you know for us to really you know be able to understand facial readings better yeah you have a whole bunch so yeah. this is the first one this is a round forehead line now, it's actually the hairline, so we're not really looking at the eyes. We're looking at the shape of the forehead. And oh. so around here, I'll keep it up, around forehead line, when someone has that, it's people, people, people. Mm. So they usually are an extrovert. You know, you look at the whole face, though, but they love being around people. They have a lot of friends. So it's a universal, friendly mm. um, forehead line. Another example, which is the one I have, even though it looks like I have a round forehead, I actually have a square forehead line. Right. And yeah. yours is a little more square. You have a combination. Square. But a square okay. forehead line, that's this one. It's someone who works long hours, loves doing projects. You know, we're just like, we could be workaholics if we're not um, conscious. But Definitely. Long yeah. hours. This is square. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Most definitely, uh, definitely the workaholic part. Yeah. So this is the one I've got. And this is the widow's peak. Hmm. It's like the V on the top of the forehead. Right. And when someone has this, let's say 40% of people have it. So these are some universal, but not everyone has everything. So the widow's peak is someone who by nature is spiritual and creative. And they think outside the box. Hmm. Yeah. So they also... When I do this with someone in a career, if they have this particular forehead, they will not necessarily like to be micromanaged in a job. Mm -hmm. So they are definitely not the person for the convent, the army, or some job where, you know, it's like, right, you know, they, right, right. They, they do not like that. So, um, so that's the widow's peak. And actually, so far, these features, when I say them to people, they always nod. Now, the difference, there are many types of face reading. I just want to explore that for people tuning in, is when I started, there are four world systems of face reading. So I took them, and it turns out, Jacob, they're all, they all have different meanings for, diff for the same feature, which makes it for someone in research makes it crazy. Wow. So the example, like a mole on the tip of the nose mm -hmm. for some of the feature, for some of the systems meant bankruptcy for other systems means financial abundance. Well, it can't be both. <laughs> One <or the laughs> right, other. right, right. So when I developed my own system, looking at a few thousand people, um, I took the features and I tested them over and over and over again. So the system that I do is about 98% accurate. So here's another one. This is the one you have. Oh, wait, actually, you have thick eyebrows that are low set. This is high set eyebrows. Oh, okay. So high set eyebrows, mine are medium high, but high is like really high. And so high is somebody who likes to be treated with respect. When you meet them, they want you to use their last name. And then they go, oh, no, call me Joan or, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> you treat them with dignity and respect. You know, we like to treat everyone with that, but yeah. even more so with them. With so those, they also yeah. have super high standards. Now, the eyebrows you have are thick, but they're medium low set. So thick eyebrows, this is you, is strong about what you will and won't do. Mm. So you're not a wimpy person. <laughs> not like anybody's would be, but some people are a little, you know, kind of playable and, but you're like definite. 
And then the eyebrows, mine, mine are finer. And it doesn't mean I don't have strong values, but it's a different meaning. That's what makes face reading interesting is it's not opposite. But the fine eyebrows also mean kind of fine-tuned, um, can be sophisticated, yeah. you know, just it's sensitive. So, okay, now these eyebrows are low set. And so the low set eyebrows, we're looking at low set as related to the physical eye. Keep in mind the eye itself has 10 parts. We're just looking at some of them. Wow. So the low set eye eyebrow is someone by nature who is friendly, easy to get to know. So they just easy hmm. for, you know, people, people, people. Okay. Whereas this particular eyebrow and sometimes we'll see this in models or actors, actresses. Mm. And this is the, um, I call it the arch over right. the pupil or the eye. And this is love of fabric texture color. So um, not only do they love fashion, you know, their home is gorgeous on and right. on. They also um, can have a temper at times. And so depending on the rest of the facial features, because you put everything together, um, either, here, here's an example of how they fit together. So with the arch in the eyebrow, if for example, they have a huge jaw, I hate mm. to use Donald Trump as an example, but oh. Donald Trump's <laughs> jaw, I, you know, this is rage. <laughs> they don't just yeah. have a temper, they're like, <laughs> okay. Right. So whereas if, if their eyebrows are like this, and let's say they have rounding in their face, then they're a fashionista, you know? So it's how you put things together that makes them accurate for the right. person. Right. And then, and then by the way, of course, with career, and this is all in my book, I take the facial features that are predominantly the ones where people are successful in that career. And I list them, you know, and there are specific features that match communication, you know, like therapy, analytical jobs, like my face is an analytical because I worked in medical research also. So analytical jobs, music, physical jobs, sales. So they each have different facial features that will match. Okay, now here's another eyebrow. These are almost always <laughs> computer programmers, almost like 85%. I was walking, I, I did this, um, What's it called? A seminar for uh, a famous spa in Mexico, Rancho La Puerta. And the man walking in front of me on the way to go to the, he had these eyebrows. And I said to him, excuse me, are you a computer programmer analyst? He went, yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> that probably happens to you all the time, but you don't, you know. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like, yeah. and the other, the other kind of story joke was, I've done about 500 classes, and in one of them, there were 100 people. And I remember this man came up to me who is Japanese, about 18 years old, and he had a certain facial, and he said, can you tell me what my occupation will be? And I looked at him, and I said, mechanical engineering. And he went, oh, great, because that's my major. And I'm like, <laughs> so the goal is helping people. You know, and I always think if only I had known about anything like this when it came to occupation, it would have saved me a lot of time. <laughs> so, of course. You know, yeah. yeah, this is another example. This is my particular jaw. And this is the narrower jaw. And this usually is gifted and shy. And so even though I've, as you know, been on like 60 TV shows, Tyra Hallmark, Right before I would go on TV, I would sit in the back and meditate because basically I'm an introvert and I'm terrified. So I would sit and wait till I felt, you know, a spiritual connection. And then I would just go out and do my work. So this is kind of shy. Whereas this particular jaw structure, who we know in a politician who I just named, <laughs> huge jaw structure. Looks familiar. Is, yeah. <laughs> what we, we looks, say, look, looks certainly familiar sort of to like us. someone or, we just mentioned yeah so anyway but the huge jaw structure is incredible willpower dynamic energy and a story we were going to talk about historians alexander the great who um 
one dominion over the world. Mm. His teacher was Aristotle, for real. Aristotle hand-selected all the generals for Alexander the Great, and they all look like this. Wow. This means huge physical endurance, um, dynamic energy, willpower. When we see someone with a face like this, we follow them. Because <laughs> mm. this is, I lead you. Like Winston Churchill, huge jaw structure. Mm. And this story I, I love is about one of them, about Abraham Lincoln. And there was a girl who was six years old and she wrote Lincoln and said, and he had my face structure. Abraham Lincoln had the wow. mind be, what would you say? Kind of spiritual, shy, mm -hmm. humanitarian face structure. Okay, so the six-year-old girl said to Abraham Lincoln, sir, I think you should draw, you should grow a beard. Okay, so Lincoln's face was this, and he had lost, I don't know how many elections, because I don't have a poli politician's face. Mm. So anyway, so Abraham Lincoln did that. Now his opponent was Douglas during the time of 1860. Douglas had this huge face. So by growing his beard, Lincoln changed his face shape to be big, and that was when he won the presidency. And historians who knew nothing about face reading attribute his way of the presidency to his beard, wow. which is what happened because he had the humanitarian component and he had the leadership and the love of people, but he didn't have the personal power that people saw as dynamic. By changing his face, he changed his destiny. And it all came together. Wow. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to show you a few more that are fun for romance, because face reading, um, I look at people all day on, what was it? I was on KUSI with Laura Buxton. We did 20 shows. And she used to say, if only I had known about you when it came to men, you could have saved <laughs> a lot of grief and right. vice versa, women, men. Right, 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 right. So, but anyway, so there are facial features for the lips and the lips have to do with sensuality and your sexual style and and how you express yourself so this particular lip is the one the upper lip is narrow and the lower lip is full this is 85 percent of people and you and i have this lip so this is the one not necessarily related to central things but this means i take in information and i don't gossip so it's confidentiality and when you're looking for therapist minister counselor partner <laughs> do you want that I will, I will die with many secrets you know from the work that i do yeah absolutely yeah, yeah we hear things and the goal is to remain confidential yeah. and and learn from them too like quick story that i love is one of my favorite people manfred in costa rica is a CEO. And when he contacted me, I don't know, 10 years ago, he be subsequently became an intern and student with me. But he, the first thing he said to me, Jacob, is what can face reading do for me? That's you know, because I do this yeah. a lot with CEOs. And what I said is it'll blow open your heart. Because the truth is, when you see people clearly, you're right there with them. Your compassion's expanded. They see that you see them. There's an immediate connection from, from a spiritual level. And and the first time he told me, he he because he worked with me for like four years, the first time he said he read somebody live, you know, and this is quite a quite a well-known man. You know, he's not like, you know, just he said he sat in his car and he almost cried because it was so revealing and the person was overwhelmed and it was so happy mm -hmm. so when we see people and we really understand them that's really the essence i hope i believe of the spiritual life which is my goal and yours yeah. and another example this is elvis presley wow. and in this you know this is rare lip structure the lower lip is huge you know it's like mm -hmm. And so this is sensual, very sultry, sensual. Mm. When you see this one, it's not, it's not a common lip. Mm. However, this one is a balanced lip structure. And in this one, the upper lip is the same exactly as the lower lip. Mm. And what this one means is 
the person believes in fairness. Mm -hmm. Like I was looking at a mom the other day and said, um, because she had this, I said, what you give to one child, you give to, you know, all three of your kids. In other words, you give them the same opportunity. Doesn't mean they'll take them, but you like things to be fair. And she said, that's one of my biggest qualities. I need things to be fair. So um, these are just a few examples. Keep in mind, they're thousands. But um, when we understand people and we look at them in terms of their face and what they're doing and who they are, it really gives us a better connection with people. And like you said, that's what it's about, really, is that heart connection. And for us, not only, you know, through face rings to understand ourselves, other better, but more importantly, to understand yeah. people and to see the real person and to understand the dynamic at play with their facial structures. I think that's a beautiful place. You use the word understand. And I just had a podcast that I was um, a guest on, and I talked about the breakdown of understand where it has the word under and stand, and you take yourself under that person, you, know, oh. you stand underneath that person, and you look up and oh. not down. Um, right. and you're able to kind of see the real essence of the person that you're, that's in front of you. Um, yeah. you know. And I had another example, a story that comes to me. I did, as I mentioned, like 500 classes for the Navy and Jetty Craig, wow. Fortune wow. 500. And anyway, but right. in one of the classes, the one I did for the Navy, this woman came up later who was, was a student of mine and she was in the, like top in the Navy and Anyway, she had at a staff meeting, there was this other woman she never got along with. It was like, you know, never, never, like 20 years. So she took my class and she said what she did in the staff meeting was she just looked at her and in a different way, because she looked at her trying to understand her reading her face. And after the staff meeting, this woman came up to her and and was very friendly, which is like never happened. And what what my students said to me was when she looked at her, the woman picked up her positive, compassionate, you know, I want to know who you are, friendliness, and changed her attitude. So it goes a long way, even just trying to understand people and even where they're from. Like one, I'll give you a quick other example in from the book. And this is one that many people know. They're the two sides of the face, the right side and the left side. So if I put my hand, Jacob, on my right side of my face, it's this side. If I look at you, the right side, because the optic nerve crosses, mm. the right side is where the picture is with the light brown table in your room. That's your right side. The left side is where that lamp is. Okay, mm. so it's like this. Okay, the right side of someone's face is their family of origin, what's happened to them, um, all their experiences. And the left side of their face is who they've become from that. Now, there are only three options. The first one is they're the same, which is very unusual. Um, and when they're the same, what that means is what you see is what you get. You know, this is the person's like, this is it, you know, which is. I course. thought it could mean that they're a leaf in water, but I don't know. You know, <laughs> yeah. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> you're so funny. So um, what was it? So anyway, so if they're the same, um, uh, the goal, of course, it, you know, at least my goal for me is to be transparent, you know, where what we say is what we feel is what we think, which is right. what Gandhi said, you know, we're congruent. That's the goal. So, so particularly, you know, when they're the same, it means sometimes the joke though, is there's no filter, you know, it's like, you know, the person just goes, yeah. so anyway, okay, so they're the same, it means what you see is what you get. Okay, the second one is the one that I have, and often people who work in medicine, in trauma, firefighters, you name it, where the right side, which is our family of origin, many people are in recovery, um, all the 12 step works, dysfunctional family of origin. So the right side sometimes looks a little tired or a little worn, like I've seen a lot of trauma in all my years in medicine. 
So it's kind of like the right side is yeah, not as easy. Okay, the left side is your spiritual life. We don't always have control over what's happened to us. Mm -hmm. I know there's a karmic component, but you know, in general, this is this part. But the left side is who we've become from it. Wow. And so when you're looking at someone, you want the left side to look good because <laughs> this means that the person's growing they're changing they're learning and one example hold on i was What's... on morning tv when uh was it clinton was inaugurated yes and so they broke from washington dc to kusi where i was analyzing his face okay so clinton had the two sides of his face that were very different so the left side of his face was who he really is, was actually very manipulative, controlling, and cold. Hope he's not listening, yeah. <laughs> and then the right side, yeah. which is his, his you know, family, was like, you know, I've got this, you know, I'm suave. I'm, you know, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. When I said on morning TV, this was at his inauguration. Right. I said, at some point during his presidency, he's going to trip up. In other words, he's going to lie and the whole country will turn on him and he won't like it. We'll enter what six or eight years later, Monica Lewinsky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the point is, the goal is if your left side, which is who you really are, is in denial or isn't looking so great, the goal is to beat a path and to call you, you know, therapy, beat a path into inner work, inner transformation, so that you're aware of things in the shadow, as Carl Jung called it. You know, you're aware of things that you need to change inside and you work on them. So like one another quick example was um, in... Um, use a different example, different country. Um, they, I do this on um, YouTube all over the world. So there is a family in Spain and the politician, um, famous politician. So his wife came to see me wow. and his wife, and I didn't know, sorry to say, but um, his wife showed me his picture. So he was like really well known and blah, blah, blah. Hmm. well, his left side, was actually quite violent and quite ruthless. Hmm. And so I looked at her and I the first thing I said, and keep in mind, I'm usually super positive and, you know, growth oriented. Keep it in the light, said, yeah. You know, I said to her, is he beating your kids? And she wow. said, yes, he's beating the kids and he's beating me. And no one knows because he's so grandiose and famous, whereas the left side is who he is to his wife and children. Wow. wow. So that's especially like people who do therapists, who, excuse me, who do therapy and medicine. I train a lot of therapists because this is another skill for assessing someone very quickly. Because before Freud, um, face reading, physiognomy is the 2000 year old word for what I do. Face reading was used as the only system to understand character before Freud. And when he came to Germany, as you know, medicine and psychiatry split mm. so now they're separate um modalities where, easy, yeah. where it was all connected wow so i do the connected part <laughs> yeah i knew we we're getting on some of the karmic and spiritual ties but i i, I know harvard you know has come out you know years ago saying that the brain obviously can change through its developed neuroplasticity and different pathways exactly. of the brain that can change so what you're saying basically is it's not set in stone your karma, the face that you have. No. And when you're on the right track, it's going to reflect and show in your Absolutely. face. Like, have you been able to read clients oh, yes. throughout the duration yes. of your career who maybe were offset and now they're really tuning in? And do you see a difference that Absolutely. speaks to the congruency of their changes? Now, to answer this in terms of ABCD is would be misleading for viewers because right. it's very in depth. Because sure. I've looked at, I don't know, you know, 
I don't know, 15, at least 15,000 people. I can see right away if someone's in recovery and what they're doing and how way, how well it's going. Yeah. Um, and the whole goal is no one's perfect, you know, but we're all aiming to work on ourselves. And um, like I said, hopefully be more congruent emotionally, spiritually, physically. Yes, absolutely. But definitely I can see it. It often shows in the eyes and um yeah but it's just because i'm used to nuances of looking at things whereas if someone were tuning in on this podcast they might go well i want to check this but but you won't be able to do it in the same way probably it's just yeah. it's more experience right so. and and best to obviously read some of your book look at some of your workshops and really you know, get more involved with a lot of your work to really pick up on these nuances intrinsicies you know the one example um, is, I don't know if you mentioned on YouTube, I have my 60 videos or a lot of them. There are 2 million people watching them <laughs> and they're all free. So just start watching the videos on face reading. Keep in mind what I tell anyone is try not to study different systems because they all have different meanings for features and, you know, they're, it's very confusing, but um you can watch all those shows for free yeah. and my book is very inexpensive. So if you want to study that, that's the way I would go. Yeah. Um, final question is I know there's a video that I watch of you that I just love. It's an older video, but the question is posed is, you know, what is an old soul and how can you tell oh, that here we go. in face okay. reading, which is really um, a, a that that video is just perfect and how you answered everything so i'm hoping to bring some of that magic here to our dialogue but viewers of mine are really interested in soul oh, age yeah. and its representation of facial reading so yeah please yeah. the floor is yours yes we we're waiting for that okay now we're going to talk about soul age yes. so that one um up till now what i've been talking about with face reading are the facial features like the eye color means something. There are five kinds of eye colors, lips, you know, everything means something. Those are facial features. Then next I covered right side and left side. That's number two. Number three is completely unrelated to facial features. It's called soul age and it's the radiance that comes from the eyes. And I brought a lot of photos to show your group. Yeah. So first I want to talk about what is soul age in terms of face reading. Yes. You know, there's so many definitions that are, you know, we we read all the time. Okay. Level one, level two, level three, and they just yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to give you my simplistic point of view here right. and how to know. Okay, what we're looking at in Soul Age is a compilation of the person's degree of wisdom, inner compassion, maturity. And it's not necessarily emotional maturity, but it's spiritual, emotional, um, or understanding, you know, soul age will give us an understanding of others' behaviors from inside out. Yeah. Also motivation. And the other part is what kind of person do you want to be, you know, based on soul age. And again, this is a universal um, skill has nothing to do with ethnic backgrounds, has nothing to do with eye color or age. Like you said, when we started, and I've seen this many times, there are babies who you come in and you're like, wow, look at those eyes. And then you're like, boy, this is a young soul, this little baby. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we'll see people in their 50s or 60s, you know, and their eyes are flat. And so I'm going to cover that in a second. Like in the 60s when we used to look at magazines and they'd ha we'd have models and not saying all models mm. you know have this at all but their eyes would be completely flat and so what flat means is you're looking at someone and your eyes can't go in very far in other words you're, and i'll show you pictures it's just like they're right on the surface and so that's a very young soul so again nothing to do with eye color ethnic background we're looking only at radiance okay so here we go in keep in mind how i define this is there's a young soul and old soul and in the middle you know there's a range in the middle i, I call it mature soul but i'm going to use young and old to make it 
really strong presentation here. Yes. If, if the people go on YouTube, the um, two videos I have on Soul Age, one of them that has Yogananda, is my personal teacher, my spiritual teacher, Yogananda and St. Teresa of Lisieux. So I chose a Indian man and a French saint, you know, mm. saint. And looked at the soul age in their eyes. And that particular video, it's a little hard to see the texture of the video, but has 250,000 people watching. So it's quite popular. And then the other one on soul age has some of the photos I'm going to show you now. So just study this more. Keep in mind, soul age is the most complicated to figure out. Mm. So um, just as an aside here. Okay, a young soul. What does that mean? Emotionally, what that means is there, if there is a problem, it's you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's never them. It's like we in psychiatry we call that projection, which is it's your problem, it's not my problem. So a young soul, they love boundaries. They love things that um, you know, for me, rigidity makes me nuts because I'm not a young soul, but for them, that helps them. Mm -hmm. That structure helps them because it gives them a range they can function in. A younger soul, when you look at their eyes, the eyes, as I said, they bounce right back. In other words, their, their eyes appear flat or cold. Now, the difference in criminology, which I teach college classes on criminology, the difference in a criminal and a young soul, just normal person, is in the criminal's eyes, they're vicious and they're ruthless, and you pick up a, an anger. And that's different than just a young soul. And quick story is after September 11th, I did a short project with the FAA for terrorism. And so as part of that, the FBI would send me photos of criminals. And, and then I categorized all the facial features that are found in criminals. And then I did it historical back sweep and the features are all the same wow. and one of my students came from Poland I think yeah. Dachau one of the concentration camps well, anyway yes, yes. took a picture of the wall of these Nazis and they had all the facial features that are for criminals wow. each one of them wow. and so it's like and the idea with facial features and reading criminology is only point like zero zero one of the population most people are wonderful however when we're dealing with that other network of people um the more of the facial features they have that are the really negative ones these are all in my book and the joke is of course if you're dating you you might want to read some of those okay <laughs> He's yeah. Yeah. so but um you know the really drastic facial features I was on national radio out of New York. My and... hometown, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And one of the heads of the police department, this was years ago, called me, wrote me and said, he. we got to know each other. He said, everything you said is 100% accurate. Wow. He said, I've always noticed these features, but wondered about them. He said, if only we had known about what you do for people who are um, policemen on the street because these are very dangerous. And so, so anyway, they're all in the book. But so younger souls, if they're very vicious, you know, they tend to go towards, I'm a victim, you know, a little into the criminal element. But most people who are young souls are just, you know, they kind of bounce through life a little bit. Mm. <laughs> you know? And they learn from mistakes big time. When you, okay. when you said structure, would you mean also prone to like religious structure too? Like they need that. Is, is that a big be. unith pull? I wasn't, I wasn't going to go into that, but it could be. It's possible. Um, but deflection or, projection is a big thing. The lack of awareness. Um, yes. That's a big thing. Accountability, you know. No accountability. So a lot of um, narcissists must be, you know, young souls. Not all, but yeah, that could be. And keep in mind because... I'm not a trained therapist. I don't use those words to diagnose, but you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I work I, everything. I try to I stay away from the words, but <laughs> yes, yeah. just the, yes. So, but the eye, I'm going to show you the eyes. So you'll yeah. understand. So, so in the middle, 
you know, if there's a middle, I call it mature souls. Mm -hmm. Mature soul is somebody they're interested in changing the world. They're interested in politics and teaching, and it's all very useful and important and positive. So young soul, you know, a little harder, but, you know, when we start moving towards mature old soul, it's like the person's in action. Mm -hmm. The difference in an old soul is this. When you look at their eyes and we're thinking Martin Luther King, we're thinking Dalai Lama, we're thinking Yogananda, we're thinking the painting of Jesus, Hoffman's painting of Jesus. Um, there's warmth in the eyes. You look in them and there's a depth, there's a compassion, and there's a wisdom coming from the eyes. And so there's like a brightness. Um, so... Let me just see if I've covered everything. The old soul is interested in changing themselves. Yes, they might work in an area that's teaching, counseling, but predominantly, if we have a problem, they go, okay, what do I need to change? You know, maybe, you know, I need to work this out with you, mm. um, you know, which I will do, um, make amends, do something. But at the same point, they're interested in inner transformation. That's their goal self-actualization. And I know Maslow, who was a psychologist, talked about the levels of self-actualization, yeah. self-actualization being the highest. Mm. And so that's really what an old soul is interested in. Okay, so now I'm going to show you just old souls and young souls. And young souls and the difference of the eye radiance. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this wow. is the young soul. And keep in mind, has nothing to do with eye color. And when you look at the eyes, they're kind of flat. Your eye can't go further into the eye. And when I show you the older soul, you'll, you'll understand the difference. So this is a comparison. Mm. There's a depth so and young, radiance. Yeah. yeah. The young soul, it's like a bounce back mm. at the top. You know, your eyes, they just kind of bounce right back. Whereas the older soul... Mm. I don't know if this is the Pope. I forgot who I put down there as the older soul. But there's a sense of compassion in the eyes. There's a wisdom. You know, there's a genuineness. Mm. And that's the older soul. That's the bottom of the two eyes. And here's another one. These are the presidents. Obviously, Clinton's at the top. Not that wow. I don't like Clinton. I've said a few things. But Clinton has a very younger soul. Mm. Eyes are very flat. And this is president, past President Obama. So you can see the depth of the of the eye radiance. love, compassion, understanding. Hmm. Wow, I see the you know the difference. There's a depth. So yeah, you would it, you would agree that the eyes, to some degree, are are a window to the soul. Is that oh, absolutely a part of the face reading? That that's yeah, absolutely. And like we said, and you mentioned at the beginning, children, babies come in sometimes with these incredible. Yeah. Or, just, or you can look at Buddha. Well, excuse me, there are no photos of Buddha. You can look at um, perhaps Mandela or Dalai Lama as a child. There are pictures of Yogananda as a child where the eyes are incredibly beautiful. The saints, like St. Teresa of Lisieux, if you look at her pictures as a three year old, her eyes are like beaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is a friend of mine. You can see the older soul age. So there's a joyous quality and an mm. inner depth in the eyes. Beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful. And then this is an example of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Wow. Even though she's not looking at you, you get a sense of um, depth. Wow. That picture also depth. invokes hope to me, too. You know, it, yeah. invoke, what did you it, say? Jim? That picture invokes hope, you know. Hope, yes. Yeah. And where am I here? Oprah? Oprah, you know, has mature old soul qualities, soul mature to old, yeah. yeah. And so this is an example, someone who is not Caucasian, it really doesn't matter the ethnic background mm. at all, but I just wanted to show examples. Wow. But also, if we think of the Dalai Lama, you know, and the great saints, we look at their eyes and you can see this deep quality. And I'll give you an, another interesting example that I really enjoy. When I was in um, Montreal, Canada, mm -hmm. and there's a crypt to Brother Andre, and 
it's the St. Joseph Church. I'm not sure the name. Anyway, when we were there, here's we saw his face. So here's this man. He has the face of someone who's seen a lot of hardship, you know, a lot of lines. Not a, not at all a criminal face, but just a lot of hardships and a difficult life. You could mm -hmm. kind of feel that from the lines and the face and the structure. However, his eyes were like <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous eyes. Okay. So I'm looking at his face thinking, wow, this is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And so the whole church is lined with all the crutches and the band-aids or, or bandages of everyone he healed. I mean, hundreds of feet of crutches. He was a great saint. And he was the porter for the monks. So here he was in the monastery. He would open and close the door. That's what he did. And so oh, wow. he's a great saint. And so face reading tells you a lot. You know, there's a lot that you can learn about who someone is, where they're going, mm. you know, what they need to learn, what we can learn from them. Right. That's important. Right. What we, here's another example. I know when I talk to families, another example, your mother-in-law, what can you learn from them? What do you need to pay attention to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things like that. Or your sister, brother, it doesn't matter. Husband, wife, all the same. A lot of lessons. So it's not necessarily about judging a book by its cover, but maybe learning by a face, by its cover and how it presents to you and, you know, what information yeah. it presents and how you could better understand uh, people in your path from love to career, you know, to what relate, whatever it is, you know, and people who challenge you as well to understand their story and why the way that they are the way that they are on a deeper soul level. Uh, Barbara, was there anything that we didn't cover? I know you've gone through so much ground today mm -hmm. um, yeah. and have given our, our viewers so much information. And I thank you for your generosity of your time. Uh, oh, was cool. there anything that you that you didn't uh, um, discuss? Yeah. This is just a fun story. This is in my book. Yeah. And you know, it, it kind of goes a little into history. So Abraham Lincoln was good at face reading. Mm -hmm. He would sit in front of his jurors and choose jurors mm -hmm. in the court by using the system, you know, similar system. Um, I wasn't around that. So it's <laughs> just kidding. So anyway, but he, it, you know, using this similar system. So anyway, the true story was he was in the White House and there was a man who wanted to be secretary of the treasury. And I don't know the names though. And so the man appeared before Lincoln. And so Lincoln said, yes, you want to be secretary of the treasury, hand me your dossier. So man put all the paper there. So Lincoln took a second, you know, everyone's sitting in the White House waiting to go home for dinner and you know, see their family. It's hot, you know, it's like, so Lincoln's reading through all these papers. And so he looks at the man in front of him and he says to him, will you excuse us, please? So the man leaves the room. He turns to, Ab this is true. Abraham Lincoln turns to his cabinet and says, I don't want this man anywhere near me. People are like, mm. you know, because this man had these incredible paper mm. dossiers and who knows what resumes were called in 1860 look good on the surface and you know, yeah, to that degree. Yeah. on the surface but Not lincoln the facial surface, right yeah. yeah so it appeared but lincoln knew right away mm. and lincoln's comment was show me a man who's 40 who is not responsible for his face and lincoln knew he was a criminal and actually the man had stolen the papers Right. and had escaped from prison and lincoln saw that right away hmm. not to say that people who are in prison can't do recovery you know i'm big on this however lincoln knew that this man was lying and and was you know was not in anywhere in any way ethical wow. so Indeed. interesting so at the end if i could jacob can i show people more how they can learn more what I absolutely barbara whatever okay. yes so this is the book. I no longer feature it on Amazon. It's now just on my website, which is face, face reading one. That's the number one dot com. So face reading one dot com. It comes in paperback for the United States and anywhere internationally, PDF, iPad, and paperback. And then 
And when I send you the book, I also put in the chart. I have a chart that I did that is the 400 facial features and what they mean for $10 and I stick it in the book and wow. some short stories and other fun things. And then also for Jacob's group only, I have a special discount for a face reading. And usually on my website, it's 175 an hour. And you can, on the website, I list everything I cover, which is basically anything I can think of, that mental, right. physical, spiritual, you know, practically your blood type. <laughs> I can get that, you know. Yeah. So, but um, for Jacob's uh, group, for a month for or my two. my audience, you, yeah. Uh, your audience, thank you. It'll be $140 for the hour. And that's a discount. And so what you need to do to get the discount because it's not on my website, is write me face reading one at AOL. Face reading one at AOL. And my phone number, if you want to call and you have questions, 760-479-0008. And I'll respond. So if you want to learn more, I would definitely go to YouTube. As I said, there are, I think, at least 50 of my TV shows on YouTube. And uh, I think that's all I can think of. Yeah. So thank you, Jacob. All my viewers, I really strongly recommend checking out Barbara's website and her generous offering. I know I've had um, sessions with Barbara and they've really helped me out throughout you know, my life. So I would recommend checking it out. And all of Barbara's information will be you know, in the YouTube description. So you can check out her website and all of her information and you know, try to find her YouTube channel as well. Well, Barbara Roberts, thank you. It's great to connect with you. I know thank my you, viewers Jacob. just will take in so much <laughs> from this, and I highly recommend my viewers to constantly look back on this um, video because there was a lot of information that could be very helpful in your life to navigate the different facial features that you'll encounter in the in your life. So, Barbara, thank you for your time for coming on as my mm -hmm. guest in the Wisdom Jacobs Ladder. All right. Well, that was a wonderful interview with Barbara Roberts. You know, she really gave a lot of tips and tools for, you know, you know, viewers to understand the different facial features to look out for. And, you know, she has her whole, you know, down to whole science through a lot of in-depth study and research and work um, in her work. So it, it was very informative. And I hope that you could start to use some of these tips and strategies in your life and start to notice the difference of the people that you encounter in your daily life and to better understand who they are and why they are uh, from a facial feature perspective. So thank you for tuning into episode number 28. It was a pleasure to have you on my channel here. I look forward to continual engagement each and every week you know, as we drop episodes of all different types of information to heighten your lives and elevate your climb on each ladder each and every day. Thank you very much. Talk soon. All love.